This is my 1923 Model T, and I decided to put new tires on it. Um, and I was told that this was going to be a big hassle, especially getting the old clincher rims off, or cl clincher tires off the rims. Uh, but I have not had a very difficult time, and I decided to, at least so far, and I wanted to make a video because I didn't see any on the Internet about these uh, clincher tires for the Model T. I saw a lot for the split rims. But uh, anyway, the first thing I did is I removed the tire with the rim on it. And there's four of these bolts that hold each tire on. So you can see there's a hole there and there's another one there. So anyway, you've got these four uh, bolts that run through the rim and you know onto the tire, the frame of the tire. So uh, you take those four off, then you might have to pound this with a rubber mallet or something just to get it off from age. But it, it, none of these really gave me a tough time or fought me getting them off. And then the next step is getting the rubber off the rim, and I'll show you that. Okay, this is the last tire. I, I already took three of them off before I decided to make this video. So this is number four of four. And I should have mentioned in the last take that uh, this is a 5 8 um, socket that you need to take these, these uh, bolts out. And this is a Wards Riverside uh, standard uh, 30 by 3.5 tire. And this is what I had on the car when I bought it about 15 years ago. And I remember when I bought it, one of the guys from the local car club looked at it and said that, you know, these tires shouldn't even be on the road. Uh, well, they've been on the road for 15 more years. And the only reason why I replaced them now is because um, they were on sale. I couldn't pass pass up the deal. So I'm replacing them with Wards Riverside, exactly the same, three uh, by three and a half. And um, the next step will be to take this uh, valve uh, stem out. And I've got a tool here. Uh, I just slip in there. And I might be able to do it right while we're on the, the video here. Let's see. And you know, let the air out, so we get that out of the way. And careful that you you keep that. Now, one thing I gotta explain: people said this was a a big job when it came to taking these clincher tires off. I, I really didn't find that to be the case. The tools that I use, I have two tire irons, which I, I end up using more. Than these two. The, these two I bought at Harbor Freight. And, you know, they give you better leverage. And, and I'll show you how, why they're okay. But I end up using these two more because what I do is I is I stick one in there, and I'll demonstrate this on the next take, and I, and I use this edge to turn, to twist it, to give me a little more space in there. And then while that's twisted and I got a little bit of a gap, then I take this one and I get deep in there and pull it up. And uh, the system seems to work pretty well. Now, once in a while, when, when you need to really get some leverage, and I use this thing, and this does seem to, to do a good job um, pulling up a larger section. Uh, so, you know, I would recommend, really, these tools. This, this works well for me. Okay, now, I'm working alone, so it's going to be a little hard to do with one hand. But I've got one hand here holding the, the, uh, the tire iron. Um, and you can see I put it in and I twisted it to give myself a little bit of a gap. Now, once I do that, I'm going to take the second tire iron and stick it in there and pull it up. And this is what I mean by that. And again, it's too bad I can't film this as I'm doing it, but I only have one hand or one hand to hold the camera. Um, my family members are fucking worthless, so I, I can't rely upon anybody to help me here. So anyway, um, I am going to now, now, now I will take the Harbor Freight one and stick it in there now that I've got a nice big gap and I'll pull that up and I'll show you that in the next shot. All right. So there's the Harbor Freight one. Uh, I took the two tire irons out. I used the Harbor Freight one to give me a nice gap. Now I'm going to start working on the sides and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the tire iron and I'm going to put it, you know, in there and I'm going to twist it 
so it gives me a little bit of um, a gap. Then I take the second tire iron and I and I grab it and I keep going along. Now you will fuck up your paint uh, a little bit, but you know I'm going to paint these anyway. You won't fuck up the metal, but you will fuck up the paint. So luckily I was able to use some leverage there to hold that bar in place so I could hold the camera. Now you can see what I did is I came down about eight inches or so and I, I put this tire iron in, I twisted it to give myself another gap. I'm gonna take the second tire iron and dig in there and then pull the lip up. All right, now, now this fought me a little bit when I tried to do that. So I used these two tire irons to dig in there and pull it up. And now I'm gonna use the other Harbor Freight one to give me more, uh, to pull the lip up more. And then once I do that, then this will start coming off a little easier. Incidentally, uh, I always wait and do that part last. And I'll show you why. Um, so once you start getting close, you know, stop and then come on over here and start working on this side and work your way around. But as you can see, this is, this is coming along. I finished getting first side off here and um, again I just worked my way towards the stem then what you do is you reach in here use one hand and reach in here and pull the use the other hand to pull the tube out and you start pulling it around I can't do that with holding the camera and then once you get here you know you wiggle like hell on this thing and uh, uh, you might even have to get your hand in there and pull it through Sometimes this isn't easy to, to pull through there. Uh, and then you take the, the tubes out. Now, in my case, I'm, I'm getting rid of the tires, of course, but I'm going to save the tubes. My tubes were good. And, you know, you can see there were no flaps on the uh, tire. Um, and that's a mystery, why, why this didn't have flaps. But I ordered new ones to, to, to put in here when I put these back in. I just realized something. I've been taking these videos uh, with the camera pointed up and down instead of left and right or sideways uh which fucks up the um you know the view on the internet I, I it's been a while since i took one of these videos i forgot about that so i apologize that the first part of this video was all fucked up and it's uh you know it's it looks like it was taken from a cell phone anyway um with the other three tires, I pumped them up, and they all held air, and uh, I ha didn't have a problem. I, you know, they came off real easy. For some reason, this one here um, had a leak. It didn't have a leak before I took it off, so I must have punctured it. I bought new inner tubes, so I'm not going to cry about it. But anyway, I'm going to patch this one and just save it as a spare. But this was the only one of the four that got punctured. So anyway, it just a. Uh, a risk of the of the job I guess you know you never really can be sure where these tire irons are going and how, how this is situated inside the tire anyway this is out I'll patch that up use it as a spare one side is off so the next step is to get the other side off and I'll show you that in a second one thing I gotta mention is that when you when you take this off Okay, and this is the side we took off here. Um, you flip it over, all right? So the side we just worked on is this side here. You flip this thing over, and when you take the other side off, you work from, from this side now, the opposite side. I gotta make that clear. And you, you stick this down in there, and I'll, and I'll show you in a minute, and you get it around the, the second, you know, the bottom rim here, the lip. And you, 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 you dig this down as far as you can get around that thing, and then you work your way around. And it's not very difficult, but you are going to have to, and I, again, I can't do this with my hands. I know I keep saying that, and I, I keep fucking repeating that. But anyway, um, you, you're you going to have to go down in there and pull this thing up, and then that, that gets it started. And that's what I mean right there. You pull this thing down, get it over that lip. And then you can bring one of the big guys in here and start working your way around. Uh, I don't think this would have worked too well. You need this, this pointed one here to really get down in there. But um, once you do that, you can use this to get yourself some better leverage and work your way around. And I'll take another shot as I do that. One thing I, I guess the, the trick is, I, I should explain, is once you have this pulled around, you use this tire iron 
here to work your way around and and go in here and pull it down and work your way around it um, keep keep this one stationary um, and then use this to start and, as you, and once you kind of I don't know get maybe a, a quarter of it then it all starts coming off it's easy to do now what you might have to do sometimes is use this to kind of pull the lip of the tire up around the metal rim so you use the pointed part of this to kind of flip it over that rim um, and uh, and that's that's the trick and it's really no trick it's very simple now here I pulled out the second Harbor Freight iron and you can see how that's uh, you know gonna help and and it's needed now to kind of yank this thing off so don't be bashful about using all these tire irons all right now you can see this thing's just about to pop when I say pop I mean this thing's gonna pop out of the tire you can see I've got space I mean it's just on the verge I wish I could capture it as it happens but you can see I've got enough out now where this thing's just gonna be able to pull right out and it's out um, you want to check the condition of the inside here one of mine was really super rusted in here um, so I uh, put the wire wheel on the drill and I cleaned it up and I ordered some of that POR 15 I've never used it before I heard I heard good things about it it's um, it stops rust kind of expensive but anyway I it's coming today uh, it'll be arriving because uh, it was an internet purchase and I'm going to paint these with the POR 15 just to clean them up because I don't intend on opening these up for a long time and I want to do it right so anyway check to see if you know, this one's not too bad really but I had one that was super rusty in here and it needed to be ground out and uh, I'm going to clean these up wash them out, dry them up, get them nice and clean, and then I'm going to paint it with the POR-15, and then we're going to be ready to put everything back on. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I, I forgot a step. We're, we're going to paint them. We're going to paint, you know, paint it with the metallic, uh, uh, you can see here how it's, you know, metallic color. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to do it right. So after we paint it, then we put everything back on. Just wanted to give you a shot with four of these off. You know, like I said, most of them look really good inside. Now this this one here was really rusty, so I I ground it out as as best as I can with the the wire wheel on the drill. There are the four tires. There are the three inner tubes because, as I mentioned, one of them I punctured, so I'm gonna patch that. And uh, those three held there pretty good. I, you know, I'm just going to save those as a spare. Um, and uh, the tires I am going to get rid of. But anyway, the next thing uh, I'm going to do is uh, wait for the the POR15 to come in, which is supposed to arrive in today. Uh, and then I'm going to wash these up and clean them up. And then paint them with the POR15. Then the plan is to use the metallic paint for the the edges here to make that look right and we'll start putting everything back on one of the things I, I should have put in the uh, last take was I marked all these you know this is passenger rear this is uh, driver's rear you know you want to mark these so that you put them all back on where they uh, where they came from I don't know whether that's necessary or not but it's never a bad idea to do that so I would mark them if I were you and that way they just all go back where they where they came from. I just used the POR15 to paint the rims. And um, I guess this requires two coats from what I've read. So I'll do the second coat uh, later on this afternoon or this evening. Um, but I just painted them up. And this stuff is really messy. One thing I wanted to mention is on the internet, everybody said that... Uh, you got to be careful because if you get any paint or any of the POR15 on the edge, the when you close the the top of it, the cap, uh, it'll never come off again. 
and some people had some tricks on the internet about using a syringe to pull it out the top here but don't don't drip it and then take the syringe and put it into a separate container and um, I don't know I tried to do everything I could to keep it from getting on the rim and I ended up making a big fucking mess as you can see I mean this goddamn stuff was all over the place so what I did is I I, uh, I used a piece of saran wrap between the lid and the can itself and I'm hoping that creates the barrier that's needed so that that cap will come off because I only used about one eighth to one quarter of the uh, contents of the can to do this job there's a lot more left in there so anyway that's the situation and um, I'm just gonna wait for these to dry and then uh, it says to do a second coat and I will I notice it the part where I uh, use the wire wheel to clean it up that that the POR 15 went on fine but I didn't shave off this uh, silver paint that was on the edge here I just painted over that and you can see the POR 15 really didn't cover that very good it, it repels it uh, I didn't want to grind that stuff off because I think this paint might be lead-based paint the last time this was painted they probably were using lead-based paint and I didn't want all that shit flying around and breathe that that shit in so I didn't grind the, the silver paint off but um, at any rate, the second coat will take care of that. And it was the inside of the rim I was concerned about, especially... Oh, and by the way, I did keep these in order because uh, that is important. I know what each, where each one goes because um, I think it's a good idea to put everything back on exactly the way it was. So now the, what I'm going to do... Oh, and you can see I patched the, uh, the inner tubes there. So all four are, are good. I'm going to deflate those and put them in a bag and save them. So the next step is uh, to dispose of the tires. And uh, I live in the asshole of the Earth's crust, which is also known as the state of Michigan. And we have uh, very few places where you can take those tires. The local garbage people won't take them for, you know, residential. Uh, but there are two places in the Flint area. One's in Clio, and the other one I think actually is in Flint. Uh, and I'm going to drive up there. And they they charge I think three dollars a tire, uh, and they don't care what size it is. So if it's a car tire or a oversized bike tire like uh, the Model T ones, they don't care. It's three bucks a tire. I mean that's not enough to make me cry about it. Although they're making money on both ends because they recycle that stuff, so they're making money from me and they're making money on the other end too. But I don't give a damn. Not for three bucks. But anyway, sometimes it's not easy to dispose of those tires, uh, depending on if your residential trash people take those or not. And again, mine don't. So I'm going to go take the tires up there now. When I come back, I'll put another coat of POR 15 on it. And then we'll start reassembling after we paint. We have to paint. And here I am at the tire recycling place. And that's where they're going to end up. They told me just to stack them here. So there you can say goodbye to the four old Model T tires. And uh, pretty soon they'll be shredded. All the way. Very interesting place I, I'm at here. This is in Flint at 6515 North Dort Highway. Interesting place to walk around. Here you can see I spray painted the silver metallic paint around the edges. And uh, one suggestion I would make when you do this is uh, it's probably not a good idea to put the POR 15 around this. Uh, just this portion right here because um, some of it kind of flaked up this morning and uh, you know if that flakes up then the paint's going to come off so I don't know I, w I guess I, I would recommend that you just POR everything except this this part right here of the rim because that's what you have to paint the other the other parts uh, concealed anyway but uh, anyway that's what we've got so far now I'm going to wait for the paint to dry, and then I'm going to um, start reassembling everything. I just finished putting two of the tires on the rims. And now that I'm on the third one, I thought I'd make this video. I wanted to do a couple of them first to make sure I got the hang of this. And um, what I can tell you is you definitely do not want to use those other two uh, tire irons. Use the Arbor Freight ones. Uh, you don't want any sharp points. Luckily, I haven't had a problem. Um, I did by flaps and i got these from lucas tire and these are some good flaps i mean this this is some thick shit here uh 
these are i'm very impressed with these flaps i mean they they were like they were expensive but uh well worth the money and i know some people uh some of these you know know it alls uh which seem to be i don't know these car clubs are like ground zero for the uh know it alls of the world um you know and some of these guys say oh i never use flaps and all that stuff but when you're dealing with safety uh you should spare no expense you know, when it comes to things like brakes and tires and, you know, that kind of stuff, if you want to spare some expense on um, other, uh, you know, components of the car, uh, that if they fail, you're not going to lose life or limb, then no problem. But when it comes to safety stuff, you know, you don't fool around. So, of course, you buy flaps. That's ridiculous not to, not to use flaps. Um, so, anyway, uh, what the first step is, is... Uh, I put the inner tube in here by itself. I, I wrap it all around in there and I inflate it a little bit. And then what I do is I take the flap and I cup it like this. I cup it and I put it around the inner tube. And I'll demonstrate that now. And then once you get that situated, then you put it on the rim. The inner tube is about halfway in. And you know, I'm just I'm just shoving it in here, going around. And uh, then the next step is uh, I have one of these, uh, these air pumps here, and I'm going to put a little air in there to give it some body, and then we cup the, the flap around it. And you can see the inner tube is, uh, has a little bit of air in it just to, just to give it some body. And now the next step is to take the flap. And of course, you've got to find the, the hole here, properly fit that over there. Um, and, uh, and start cupping it. And this is what I mean by, by cupping it here. You, know, you, you kind of pinch it down in there and, uh, and keep this straight. Because if you start pulling on it, it'll bend like that and you don't want that. You want to keep that, keep that straight. But you just start cupping this. You know, and going around, and you, you're kind of just coating one side of the inner tube, and you know, of course, the bottom of my fingers here are pushing down on the inside. So, you know, see how nice that that coats around the inner tube? It gives it a protective layer. And that's exactly what you want to do. So just keep cupping this around, and uh, well, I'll show you in the next shot, but there's going to come a point where you're going to think, oh, they sent me a flap that's a couple inches too big because you're going to end up having a gap when you, when you work your way around here. And when that happens, you, they didn't send you a flap that's too big. It's going to look that way. But that's when you let the air out. You take the, the, the uh, stem out. And uh, when the inner tube recoils, then this will all fit in very nicely. And this is what I mean by that. You know, this is in... It appears to be in right and you know it's uh it's nice and cupped and protecting the inner tube yet you got this big thing and you know the first time you do this or at least i did i thought god damn it they sent me a flap that's too big but what you do is you take this out all right and can't do this with with one hand holding the camera but now you'll I'll show you in a second where this will be gone and this will work its way around and you've got a great flap here protecting the inner tube and there it is and uh, incidentally this is only like you know five seconds after I just shut the camera off from the last take it just it just goes right in you you fit it around and it's, it's super easy once you let the air out so you keep that uh, that's stem or whatever they call that you keep that out of there while you're putting this on the rim over there uh, you, you don't you don't put this uh, this little piece back in. I don't know what they call that thing. You don't put that back in until the very end. Uh, once you're ready to put air in it for the last time. The next step is kind of important. You need to make sure that this stem goes directly in the hole and is sticking out and and is is just looks correct because if it's off to the side or it's bent or something like that, 
then the side of this uh, rim tears into this over time and you can spring a leak. It, it really has to be straight up and you got to keep an eye on that. So every little quarter of an inch makes a difference. Make sure that this uh, valve stem here is lined up directly with that hole and it goes in straight and it's sticking out straight like that. And then, and then work your way around the tire. Always keep an eye on this part here to make sure that's correct. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I made the, uh, a mistake on one of these tires. Um, I'll show you right here. You can see it. That one's bent. And uh, that's a problem. Now, I see this, this one here is not bent. That's sticking straight out. That's good. But that one there is bent. And uh, I'm probably going to have to take that one off. Because you might as well do it right. So make sure that's sticking straight out. And there's nothing in this rim that's digging into this this valve stem. Oh, and I should also mention that the the side you're working on, the only side you're going to be working on to put your clincher rim on is the back side of the rim. So the silver part that, that we painted, the part that faces the outside, you know, the car, you, ne you never really touch that with your tire iron when you're putting all this back on. You're only working from this side. You're not flipping anything over. Uh, and the nice part about that is the part that we painted, of course, won't be, um, you know, uh, blemished by uh, or scarred by any uh, movement of the tire iron on here. Because this, this is the back part here. Nobody really sees that. It's, it's the front you want to protect, and we don't deal with that. So, anyway, keep that in mind that, you know, these, um, this part here is face, face down. You know, the part that faces the outside of the car is, is something that we're, we're not going to be touching. Everything happens on this side when you put the, tire, the clincher tire back on. Well, the tire's about halfway on right now. And, um, again, keep an eye on this. Make sure this isn't crooked. And it's starting to look like it might be, so i got to keep an eye on that. But uh, what you do is you just kind of use your knee to maintain any ground that you cover here with the tire iron so as you push the tire iron and push this over use your knee here to press down and keep moving your knee up so that you don't lose any ground and you just work your way around and there's really nothing i can do to explain that uh you just you know make sure you use the harbor freight one and i use this this edge here pointed down all the time and i stick it in there and pull up and if you end up just getting this bottom lip on there, and this top lip is still around here, that's okay. You're, 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 you're almost all the way there. The hard part is getting this bottom lip to go over the rim. Once you do that, putting this in is easy. In fact, some guys just use a rubber mallet to, to, to pound it in. Um, th this here is what you got to work on. If you, if you can do both at the same time, great. But if you can't, if you only end up getting that lip, you're okay. No problem. Um... So there you have it, and I'm going to try to finish this up now. And I'm hoping that this st stays straight and comes out uh, uh, where it's not crooked. Uh, I got it on. Everything looks good, except exactly what I didn't want to fucking have happen did happen. It went in on an angle, and uh, I can't seem to straighten it out. So I got I, I got to do some research and see what effect that'll have. Um, because that is a uh, that is a problem, and uh, this should be sticking straight out. And it, it, now it's digging in there, so this is a big fucking mess. And uh, I don't know if there's any tricks on the internet what I can use to straighten this out. Otherwise, it looks good. You know, everything went in fine, but the goddamn thing went in on a fucking angle. So let me do some research. I did some checking around, and there's some people that suggest, like on a bike tire, you put the brake on and you try to turn this. But here, the, 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 you can't do that. Uh, and this thing's on tight, so there's no turn in this wheel. I'm going to have to take this cocksucker off, or at least maybe just this part, pull it up from the clincher uh, part here, um, and see if I can straighten out with my hand. Hopefully, I won't have to take this whole motherfucker off uh, the rim and start from scratch. So I'll let you know. I pulled the uh, clincher lip up here and you can see that motherfucker went right it pulled right in there so it was badly on an angle so i'm going to try to get my hand in there now and straighten this motherfucker out stay tuned well this has turned into a big fucking disaster uh i'd take the uh the rim off 
to get that straight and you can still see that motherfucker is still crooked we're gonna have to figure out what's going on there but the whole goddamn rim did have to come off i'm not exactly sure what happened but i think this fucking um flap was the problem because i had to straighten this flap out once i did that this is standing up straight so i got to keep an eye on it maybe maybe this fucking flap was pulling too much on one side or it wasn't in right you know you got to kind of go around here and make sure it's all nice and smooth before you put the tire on let's try this motherfucker again well i put the fucker back on again it's still a little crooked actually but it's at least it's a lot better i don't know what the fuck happened i mean that, that added an extra 15 minutes or 20 minutes and a lot of wear and tear to the fucking job I've been doing. Everything was going great. I'm going to have to do that other, other one too. So I, I don't want that other one sticking out on an angle like it is. This this one's a little bit on an angle, but nowhere near as bad as it was. So anyway, we'll just keep plugging along. And uh, I don't know what the hell happened. I just, uh, it, it looked like maybe the flap was pulling it to to one side i don't know fuck it this is that one tire i showed you that was up against the window there that had a crooked uh, stem i um now this one i was able to fix without taking the whole tire off the rim uh, i just uh i just um use the tire iron to pull up this part you can see i fuck up i fucked up the po uh, r15 here but fuck it nobody really sees this side anyway it's the metallic side on the uh, on the opposite side that has to look nice. So, um, and, and I have to tell you something. If I were to do this job again, I wouldn't put any POR15 on here. Fuck this. It didn't need it. It wasn't rusty. It's the inside that I was worried about. Uh, so if I had to start over, I wouldn't even fuck with this, with the POR15. I just would have sanded it and painted it, um, assuming that this wasn't lead-based paint. I don't know what I would. Maybe I just would have painted on top of it, but... At any rate, uh, this this was a mistake. Uh, just if for the, if anybody uses these directions, I would just recommend painting the inside of this with the POR fifteen and leave it at that because this this ended up being a big fucking mess. Um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention that I didn't have the, this one here. I didn't have to take the whole thing off. I just took off about this portion of uh, just this part of the clincher rim. And got my hand in there and I pulled it through straight. So I'm going to call it a day. I got all four tires back on. Uh, you know, obviously this this was the uh, more aggravating part of the job so far because uh, two of these came in crooked. If it hadn't been for that, I, this probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal. The other thing I wanted to mention, uh, a trick I used is I actually, I can't take a picture of this uh, or, or on video because I, I've got a I'm only one person I'm holding the camera, but what I wanted to tell you about is I, is I, I stood on this son of a bitch. I put like one foot here and one foot there once I had this part in and I used my two feet to kind of maintain the ground that I had, I'd covered. And then I went inch by inch with the crowbar, uh, the, the Harbor Freight uh, crowbar and, um, and then pulled this, this over, but standing on it, uh, one foot here and one foot there, and then moving my feet around as I as I as I made ground, that the weight of my body helped keep everything in place. So uh, that's one one thing I, I you know I was using my knees at first uh, and, and kind of uh, kneeling on it, and that that was okay. But standing on it seemed to give me more leverage, and that way I had more leverage with the crowbar to pull this thing over the top and get it on there. Um, but had it not been for these two. Uh, fuck ups here where these came in crooked uh this this probably wouldn't have been that bad of a job putting these back on all right i'm putting the tires back on now i already have that one on back there and i'm putting these on now i just want to mention something to you 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 notice these bolts that go through here one side is rounded and or two sides are rounded and two sides are flat and i know i'm stating the obvious here but just just so you're you're clear you take this flat side and that's what has to rest up upon here to get it to kind of lock in there so you want that to be you want the two rounded edges to go this way 
not up and down. And then that, and then that pulls it through enough where you know it locks in, and then you put your you put your nut on. Um, but what you don't want to do is have the thing looking like that, and then start torquing it down because you get, you'll have a gap. That has that's got a, it's got a little slot on the other side. It's got to fit in there. The wheels are back on the car. Uh, everything seemed to work out okay. Now uh, I know the wood looks like shit, uh, so I am gonna make that a next the next project. I'm gonna strip that down, but I have to research it first because I've never done it before, and I know there's a lot of different you know there's you know there's different terminology people use lacquer versus stain and polyurethane versus something else, and I, I have to ask a lot of questions and research it before I tackle the wheels, but. That is going to be the next project. Anyway, they're back on. I inflated them to 60 PSI. And uh, it feels good to have new rubber on the, uh, on the old Model T. And the next, the next job is going to be new rubber on, these, on the Model A. You can see that. That tread isn't looking too good there. So that, that'll be the next project on the Model A. I'm pleased with the uh, end result. I already took the car for a drive. Feels good. So there you have it. The job is complete.